Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Mehdi from Electroboom. Mehdi! The YouTube channel, yeah. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Good, man. Thanks, mate. As if no, as if anybody doesn't know who you are. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, I mean, how many subscribers you got now nowadays? Four and a half million or something? It's around four point seven million now. Four point yeah. seven. Wow. Is there like a? Hard, oh, no, you don't get an award for five million, do you? Only no, I have to wait 10 until million. ten million. Yeah. Are the stats tracking up towards ten million? Can you see yourself uh, hitting the? Well, I mean, over time, it seems like I hit a. Uh, Another million every year, maybe. So maybe oh, in five okay. years. Five years, yeah. Uh, I, I have to make better content. You know? <laughs> right, more broader appeal content, yeah, like, maybe. Uh, yeah, I know. Like well, my my viewers are, according to my stats, ninety six percent of them are male. So I'm pretty much yep. missing half of the society. <laughs> society, same here. Every engineering channel is the same. Every science channel is the same. So don't don't beat yeah. yourself up about it. Yep. It's just YouTube, unfortunately. <laughs> um, can we start? Like, what's your background? Because I don't actually know. I, I know you've got like a master's in EE and stuff, but I don't know. Um, do you yeah, want to well, share your background, how you got started in the industry? And I studied my bachelor degree in electronics telecommunications back in Iran, and then I moved to Canada and got my master's in microelectronics from oh, okay. SFU, my local university. Then yep. I've been working in electronics ever since. So, right, just as a Joe Blow engineer at a big engineering company, or what do you what do you been doing for? Well, regular engineering, uh, electronic engineering design. I was designing boards and PCBs and schematics of and things of that sort. Right. I never really liked testing, but other than testing, I did ah, everything else. <laughs> we're, we're opposite, because that's my background. I come from a test engineering yeah. background as well. And that makes me happy that there are people, yeah, there are people out there that enjoy testing, right? <laughs> test engineering, <laughs> yeah, it's a, there's a niche for everything. And uh, yeah. that's, I, I somehow got stuck in that, I don't know. It's No, and that's good, yeah. I mean, I don't like <laughs> testing, you like testing, so we <laughs> complement <laughs> right. each other, right? <laughs> excellent, excellent. What, once, once you get to a big enough company, Otherwise, if you're at a small company or working for yourself, you're a, you have to do everything. Yeah, you have to do everything so, yourself. Well, I mean, one anything man. you do, you have to do testing to some extent anyway, yep. right? I have to right. troubleshoot my own circuits. But No, let's start out. How did the YouTube thing start? I think 2011, am no, I right? Was, uh, 2012? I think close to the end of 2012, I uploaded my first video, yep. if I'm not wrong. And then from then... Yeah, and the, the reason it started, uh, actually before YouTube, I, I wanted to somehow share my electronic knowledge online and mm -hmm. uh, mostly for, you know, I enjoyed communicating with people offline, keyword yep. offline, because You're I'm right. a, an introvert. Forums? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Forums and things or... Yeah, like, yeah, same as what you're doing, but uh, yep. yours is much larger. Back then, I made a website and I put some articles around electronics oh, trying right. to talk about voltage yep. and current. Nice. But then I quickly realized there is a website <laughs> called Wikipedia. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is vastly more uh, detailed than you yeah. can ever do. And yep. then, yeah, I just uh, didn't continue on that one. And then at some point I realized that some of my friends were making some YouTube videos, sharing their <laughs> interesting knowledge there. Yep. And I thought that was interesting, but I didn't know if I wanted to do it until I got my hands on an ESD gun. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. Was that yes. a uh, Schaffner one? Was that a Schaffner? Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. That's a Schaffner yeah. one, yeah. I've been trying to get one of those on eBay, but they go for like a couple of thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're Five, really expensive. Five, six thousand dollars here, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Not cheap at all, yeah. <laughs> no. So, yes, that was your first video, because that I can recall that was when I first, you know, everyone shared it around on the forum or Twitter or something. No, it was... I think yeah, Twitter like, was a thing then. Yeah, I, people were sharing I guess it I was lucky that back then there was uh, nobody else crazy enough to zap themselves. Uh, zap themselves <laughs> and do that. So <laughs> did you? So you did that as a deliberate like comedy thing? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. thought that would be an angle that? Yeah, I thought that's could... what I thought. I uh, I thought it would be funny because you know everything I did in my video. I had experienced before in uh, actual job. You you know probably that how many bad yep. things happen to us during just a regular day of work, right? Exactly. <laughs> and 
I, I remembered all those things happening to me and I had the gun. I thought, hey, let's, let's reenact them on a video and just <laughs> upload it. I didn't know yep. like, it would get so many views. I, I was just sharing with my friends. and you Right. Know. <laughs> and it, and it just so that first video went uh, viral. Did it fast or uh, how did that it, happen? Not right away. It, after six months, maybe somebody like after right. that video, I made four more videos, three or oh, four okay. more videos, yep. and then after six months, that first one, somebody shared it on Reddit. Oh, and, that was when Reddit was yeah, yeah. exploding as well. And yeah, and uh, like I had twelve subscribers. I refreshed; it was three hundred, and I was like, "What <laughs> happened?" <laughs> <laughs> right, and then it got passed around, I guess, because it got passed around the forum and Twitter, and that's how I first saw it. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, yeah. Somebody sent it to me, and hey, check out this guy, you know, <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> yeah. And I I didn't know you'd made the other videos at the time. I thought, oh, he's just done a you know a one off kind of thing and then you just kept on making them so yeah, that spurred well, I, you on I was to... making yeah some random kind of subject videos really and uh, now that the, after a while that my channel got bigger I realized that those earlier videos some of them uh, were not relevant so I unlisted them and just ah, kept right <laughs> okay got it yep because I go yeah your first one was ESD second one was how electricity can kill you and then don't take don't take capacitors, capacitors for granted yeah yeah yeah, like I, I made another video about, you know, the, back then the Canadian government came up with these new dollar bills that you could, like it, it was a hologram or something. And I made a video about that and right. I realized that it was irrelevant and <laughs> unlisted that, yeah. Right, okay, a bunch of them. So at, at what point did you realize that, oh, I could do this for a full-time job? Oh, that took a long time actually. I am presuming it's your full-time job now. And yeah, has been I, I for am quite right now a full-time YouTube, yeah. I, yep. The channel is big enough that I can sustain my family. But right. <laughs> as an older guy getting into YouTube, I didn't want yep. to risk, right? So, and it's, That's uh, it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. And it, it took a long time, maybe, I, maybe four years until yep. I realized. And uh, after, after four or five years, Patreon actually was coming out and they... Right. reached out to me and they uh, I, I signed up with them and people started supporting me and I realized soon enough that mm. like that can like that plus the income from the YouTube can cover half of my income oh okay right so, so I thought to myself time, okay yep. let's make, make myself part-time I made myself part-time right <laughs> And then, I don't know, like six months after, I realized that, hey, I can cover my entire salary. So. <laughs> awesome. So, so you focused on that? You focused on, like, you know, more views, more viral content? Yeah, yeah. At yeah the well, time? I mean... Okay. Or uh, tried to? At the beginning, I was trying to get more viral content, but, you know... Mm. I can only continue my shtick for so long before it <laughs> right. gets boring, right? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I focused, uh, like I, I started increasing the educational content of my videos more, although I try to still keep it funny somehow. And yeah, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Right. Yeah, that was um, almost the same as me. Two I was doing it for two years and then I lost my job at Altium. They packed up and moved to China. And uh, my wife was pregnant with our first nine months pregnant, like like weeks away right. <laughs> from giving birth. And, and I just lost my job and she went, go out and get a real job. But but this YouTube thing's bringing in like half my income. She said, I don't care. Go out, get a real job. <laughs> right, yeah. And um, and then, yeah, six months later, um, it wasn't Patreon, but then an advertiser came, a forum advertiser came through and then that made up the, and I didn't know how much to charge, but I thought, okay, I'm earning about half, let me charge the other half of what, you know, a regular job would charge right. and they yeah. accepted and that bingo, I was instantly full time. So that sounds like the same yeah. sort of thing once, once no, Patreon came along and mm -hmm. yep. So I, I was going to ask that once you, you, cause you built, built your channel on the, the comedic side of shocking yourself um, right. kind of thing. So how have you found the reception to more serious content? I mean, I think I don't see, see a, <laughs> I don't think I've seen one of your videos where you haven't added some sort of comedy to it, but how's, how's the reception been to like, you know, here's Ohm's Law kind of thing? Right, yeah, well, I mean, I always try to put some funny angle to the video. Right. Some, although, like, probably you will quickly realize that I'm not 
funny live. I, ha I am funny offline. <laughs> no, I've seen your Maker Fair thing. I've seen your Maker Fair live demo and I thought that was really good. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I try to put something funny in there anyway because when I, or maybe that's my thinking, that if I make it too serious, it becomes boring to more people. Right. And uh, so I try to go with subjects that I personally can add some comedic angle to it. Got it. Okay. So like uh, things that are too complex for the audience, I try to avoid unless, unless there is something good can come out of it. I try to keep to basic stuff mainly. My, my main goal is to encourage people to learn more, not to, you know teach a PhD student because, <laughs> <laughs> right. well, I, I don't know really that much either. So it's beneficial to me too. <laughs> Got it. And so how's the reception been? Are the views lower on those videos where you're not shocking yourself? Uh, it's mixed because even after so many years doing this, I couldn't mm. really figure out what people like. Like I, right. I make something, I try to make it funny and I think, wow, that's going to have a lot of views and it <laughs> bombs. And then, you know, like my 5G, uh, yes, I made a video about right. 5G. It's a long one and it's very uh, like mostly explaining how things happen, more serious, less funny, and it has a ton of views. So it's, I don't know. <laughs> So I, after a long time, after a while, I realized that I just do what I do. Right, and then hope it works. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Don't 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 try and chase the algorithm as one YouTube, yeah. you know, adage. So the um, you've done, uh, like you said, the five G thing, um, the debunking videos. There's not many people out there um, in our field like doing debunking videos. Right. How did you get so? Why why did you want to do the debunking videos you just couldn't help yourself there was just so much bullshit out uh, there well, yeah i mean uh, originally i was trying to completely ignore them i knew that they were false but thereafter i realized a lot of people like when when i was getting bigger and i was getting a lot of messages a lot of people were saying that hey check this it's interesting how does it work well it doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> right and i realized that a lot of people are believing in it so i started making a videos about them but then after doing so many around free energy i got bored with free energy yeah i know there's only so many you can do i actually haven't touched it i i don't think no i have done one free energy video but that was more a response to a youtube video someone sent me it wasn't like here's debunking free energy in general yeah like if i if I, uh, nowadays if i see something that is kind of new and people don't know how it works and someone fakes it i try to cover it and spread knowledge other than that the repetitive stuff especially there are channels dedicated to making free energy crap so <laughs> yes. I, I can't debunk every single one of their videos no, it's no, it's totally impossible. We'll just well, do it a hand. Just of take a multimeter and glue it. It's electric it. tape to it. And, <laughs> it's <laughs> annoying. Yeah, debunking is it is. One, have you copped a lot of uh, criticism for it? Have your have your comments been flooded by the five G, the anti five G crowd? Uh, well, the, my comments in general are nice people. There are always these crazy people that don't believe it and say no <laughs> refer to crap reports and stuff but in general people have been positive on my comments thank god <laughs> nice so have have you ever had to fake any of the shock stuff yourself you go oh this is just not working like it's like have well, you ever had to yeah <laughs> i mean yeah Sometimes, well, a lot of times I have to fake it because I know if I do it, I, I, I have a chance of death. <laughs> right. <laughs> and a lot of things, what happens on my videos are just basically I accidentally do thumb something and the circuit blows up. Circuit blowing up is not really dangerous to me. It's just an explosion, right? It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Unless the shrapnel doesn't, uh, goes in my eye, it will be other than that, it's fine. But for the shocks... Um, uh, I, well, actually, sometimes I actually make mistakes on the video and they shock me. That, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> so do you keep that content in where you're like genuine? Oh, shit. That yeah, I mean, th th that's good content. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, 
I, I try to keep that on video and I, I, whenever I shock myself and the camera is not rolling, and I, I just, oh. just kick myself for it. Right? <laughs> yep. So do you leave the camera just rolling all the time now just in case something happens? Uh, no, that's too, too much memory. <laughs> <laughs> too much footage, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I'm thinking I should install one of these security cameras on the corner of my room and just keep recording and, you yep. know, as soon as something happens... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got the backup yeah, footage. Because I, I keep burning and shocking myself off camera and that's unfortunate. <laughs> so do you worry that people will try and recreate this sort of stuff? Or is that, you know, it's, it's obviously like leave it... Because I don't think you have a warning in your videos or description do you like don't well, try this I, at home or if i if i sometimes when i well in earlier videos not really like for example esd gun when i shocked myself i didn't really care because i shocked myself multiple times with that and nothing really bad happens to you so i didn't care about warning but the more powerful stuff like playing with a, a microwave transformer for example which almost killed me once <laughs> in I, fact I, I was gonna ask about that video that was your what 1000th no what was yeah, it no yeah, one, one million, million subscriber, subscriber yeah. video and yeah. i saw you grab the you know it's one you know you were generating a um a jacob's ladder or something weren't you yeah, and then yeah. it accidentally fell off the bench and you grabbed it like this yeah like went, a like an idiot crap. i grabbed it like an idiot <laughs> so you, you you genuinely grabbed that and then what the hell happened in that instant did, did it, how did it drag off the bench or whatever? I, 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 I can't remember the detail. Well, the, what happened, like if you slow down the video, like look at it frame by frame, when it fell over, I, I like in my brain, I thought, hey, it's falling over. It shouldn't touch my body, so I better grab it with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh. And, and if you see it frame by frame, as soon as it touches my skin the skin blows up like the arcs oh, you really? see the arcs oh. you see it's the skin jumping <laughs> the skin oh. burning right oh wow and what happened is that thank god for my flimsy setup i connected them with loose wires so oh. as soon as i contracted i pulled the wires off the transformer <laughs> wow Oh no! <laughs> did you ever think? Uh, did you watch that footage back and go, "There's no way I can actually release this video. That's just so." Yeah. <laughs> I, I was debating with myself that should I like? I almost died there. Should I release it or not? Yeah, yeah. But then I thought to myself, uh, you know, maybe if people see these accidents and how bad it can be maybe they try to avoid it because if you like for example if i made a jacob's ladder nice and clean and showed this is how it's done it w i think it would be more likely for people to go try to make it on their own right yes but if they see that i almost died there <laughs> maybe they try to like I, because i'm thinking just putting a message there that hey don't try this it's dangerous people will still go and do it right <laughs> but if they actually see that you burned and you almost died yep wow. and if you want yeah. to know my feeling at that moment like what happened was a ton of pain i don't know how to describe that ton of electric sh like probably people have touched 120 240 volts yeah, yeah. once in a while yep. 2,000 volts is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And not only that, like I was feeling this cold feeling swooshing oh. over my brain. So oh, it's like... No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. So after, after I let go of the wires, I just went out of the room and f just fell on the ground. And I was just breathing heavily, shaking. I can imagine. And I, I, I didn't continue filming. Like the next scene you see that I'm shaking and angry, I actually did it next day. <laughs> ne next day and you fake the shaking and angry. Yeah, exactly. Because right, okay, right. <laughs> there was much discussion about this on the uh, forum, on the EV blog forum, and everyone's going, oh, you know, like they always faked it. Come on. And I, I was watching it and I'm going, you can't. That doesn't look fake to me. That looks like he yeah, legitimately that, that, that did that by accident. Ones, yeah. And I can't believe he actually released that. But now that you say, that you explain the reasons why, I think, yeah, yeah, that's actually, yeah, it's not bad. It shows the dangers of this sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's a good reason. That's why, uh, 
at least I convinced myself that it's good to put all the mistakes in the video so people can see what can go wrong rather than just make this nice. Even like when you're cutting wood, <laughs> like I, you don't know how many times I've cut my fingers just sawing something. Like uh, you watch YouTube videos, everything is done so nicely. It is encouraging. You think that you can do it, but if you don't know what can go wrong and how you can get hurt, it's... I don't know. So I, I try to put everything in. Right. So I, are you trying to get away? When, when was your last shock yourself video? I can't actually remember. Are you still trying to do that to keep up the, to keep pleasing at least part of your audience? Not necessarily. Once in a while I put a jump scare in my videos so that <laughs> people wake up, <laughs> continue watching. Yep. But uh, I don't really go after shocking myself. Like my next video is about logic gates and you can't really blow anything up or get shocked with logic gates, right? <laughs> but uh, there are some videos that you get shocked anyways. Like I was trying to levitate some metal off uh, a plate using high voltage electricity and you get shocked. And yeah, there is, not so many of those contents out there so and i uh, again i realized that it, it that doesn't really matter as much anymore nowadays because like once uh, you've got the established audience yeah it doesn't yeah yeah and like uh, people watch my other content too and they still seem to like it at least <laughs> got it yeah yeah no even your uh tutorial videos still get like eight hundred thousand or a million views or something like that so yeah, that's i think still, it's that's still amazing it's a pro and yeah, I think it's thanks to my channel being big enough that I don't have to kill myself every time. Every, for every video, because <laughs> yeah, as you said, that um, stick sort of gets old fairly yeah. quick, you know. And so. also, like if you start making other type of videos, then you start gathering new audience and maybe, maybe some of the, your old audience go away because you don't get shocked anymore, but I mean, you're switching audience for audience, I guess. That's kind of a natural thing, though. I'd expect the audience who just came in for the comedy shocking thing, they've probably already left anyway, regardless if you keep doing it or not, because the, yeah. the fun factor sort of wears off, I would think. Yeah, so I try to, uh, like, change my videos up a little bit too, so that it's, yeah, like you said, the shtick gets old, so I have to keep my audience with different interesting stuff if I can come up with anything. Yep. But so you're now the, you would now realize that it's the you in, they're watching it for you. That's why it's called YouTube. So um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they, they stick around. They, they come for the shocking viral content and they yeah. stick around because they like your content, your delivery and, yeah, you know, so. and the yeah. old comedy and stuff like that. So that's obviously how it works. And um, uh, have you found that, a lot of those old videos get views still. Oh yeah, that's what that uh, that was what I was gonna say. Like, for example, my after a while, my channel growth becomes steady and not huge. But suddenly, one of my old videos gets shared on shared around and, somewhere, right? And and you just see a spike up in yeah, the, another spike of subscribers <laughs> and viewers. And <laughs> so yeah, actually, like I I could say every month maybe around. 15% of my views are from my new videos. And oh, the rest okay. Are oh, the red. Wow, that's actually quite low. Mine's about 50 50. About 50% 50 of my views come right. from old content, 50% comes from the latest videos. So, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. Maybe, you know, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's, well, I, uh, yeah, some of the videos, like, you know, my electric guitar one. It just oh, yes. keeps going yep. up. People that that is your videos. highest video. I, <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I, I know I've watched it, but it was years ago. Yeah. And I can't remember what is that one about and why is that your biggest? It's one of those stupid videos that, <laughs> you know, like uh, what I, uh, I, I tried. Well, the first 40 seconds, I tried to make an electric guitar, but it's more like an electric chair. So, oh, oh! you hooked mains wire up to it. Oh, goodness. Yes. <laughs> up, up to the metallic strings. Yeah. Right. And like people, like, I think the main reason for the growth of that video was that at the time people started co copying the first 50 seconds of that video and shared it on their own channels. 
Oh, really? We, even without giving credit, a lot of people. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. And it's only three minutes and 14 seconds too. So that's, yeah. you know, viral share worthy length kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So like the, the 50 seconds, the 50 seconds at the beginning of the video was the most viewed part of it. The rest of it, I get into how you can get uh, shocked with electricity. Right. Oh, so, got it. The more educational part of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so people I kind tune of, out then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I try to hook people in with something <laughs> and then feed them the information. Got it. So is that still your formula these days? For new yeah, videos, even the yeah, educational think, ones, you kind of do something in the first minute or something. Yeah, I think uh, I think if I directly get into the serious stuff, people may click away quicker. But if they get stuck <laughs> somehow, yep, and then I, stick around longer. Yeah, yep. like I, I try to, like I said, a jump scare, something funny every I don't know three minutes or something, so they pop back in. <laughs> So, because people get bored quickly, especially nowadays, like you have TikTok, you just want to watch yeah, five just, second no. videos yep. Yep. and move to the next one, right? So. Yep. Well, you've 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 done a couple of those shorts, haven't you? How have they gone? The the vertical video, it's YouTube's yeah. equivalent of TikTok. The my first show, Does that work? My, yeah, my, yeah, it was it's YouTube short, right? The, yeah, shorts. Yeah. The, the first one was pretty popular, four million mm. views. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a like a one minute video about the, you know how, the, you know the stupid thing about the uh, when you get the vaccine, your body becomes oh, magnetic. Oh yes, the spoon and, thing. Yes, yes, yeah, the spoon yes. one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that was good. And that was funny that like that video. I think fifty percent views or twenty five percent views of that video come from India. So it suddenly became popular oh, there, and okay. it got a lot of views right. from there. I think because most of these fake videos come from that area and people were sharing that maybe too. So so do you make money on those shorts videos? Because usually you can't demonetize, you can't monetize short videos like that, can you? If they're too uh, yeah, short. I don't, uh, yeah, I, I do make uh, money off of them. I don't know how though. How? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, well, maybe it's the ads on the side, like the sidebar ads or something. I, yeah, like, uh, I don't know. I, I assume because a lot there's of people... no pop-up ads. It, it, it is the vertical format, so I assume a lot of people watch it on their phones. Phone. And oh, and the ad, my, the app might put a yeah, it might uh, put a thing I, at the bottom. I, I don't know. I don't use <laughs> my phone well, much. It's, to... it's good that we still make money off of those. And uh, I think there was some uh, YouTube incentive to for people to. Uh, I don't know if they they were actually promoting it at one point to us uh, creators. I think yeah. yeah. For some I don't reason, know, I, I don't I know if remember. the income I make is a part of the promotion or actually the ad money that comes in. I, I don't know really. But but any uh, they, they actually don't do bad. Like uh, my my shorts get pretty good views compared to my regular videos too. So so yeah. are, are you going to keep on doing those? If if I can come up with good ideas, sure. Why not? I mean, it's it's easy to make. It's just a one minute video, and it gets good views. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, content. Yep, <laughs> got to keep churning it out. Now, big thing I wanted to talk about because I I love this. I think this is I think one of the best video you've done. Really, was the uh, Walter um, Levin um, Kirchhoff's voltage law thing. And I thought, you know, and this blew up on the forum and everything. The EV blog forum was, you know, like 50 pages of discussion and people covering it. For those who don't know, can you tell us how that video came about where you, uh, well, I'll say what it's about. It's uh, where you took on Professor Walter uh, Levin, isn't it? Yeah. Lewin, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm butchering I, uh, it. Anyway. English is not my first language, so I... <laughs> yeah, so he, he did this YouTube video where, um, well, a, uh, a, a lecture um, in mm -hmm. his uh, class where, you know, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law does not hold in a magnetic field. And you did a video uh, basically explaining how you thought his experimental setup was wrong and he's maybe wrong. How did that come about? Well, I mean... I, I watched his video before 
and I, I briefly, I like, I, I wasn't looking at it very carefully, so I thought maybe I heard it wrong until some other people brought it to my attention, and I watched it again, and to my understanding, I thought it was wrong. And so I... You thought the video was wrong, or you thought that he was right, that Kirchhoff's voltage law doesn't hold? No, I think, I think the Kirchhoff's law holds. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Although, like, in my videos, I try to seem confident about what I know. Yeah. Confident. But, uh, like, at the end of the day, I'm always, like, I know myself and how, like, every time I've been too confident, I was wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got it. So, I, I was worried to touch the subject, especially since he's a, like, he's a very good uh, oh, professor, right? Oh, he's famous. Right? And he's, yeah. And he's famous, like he's, yeah. you know. Yeah, he has very good educational content and he is still making content in his channel and it's great. Like he's very good. But this one didn't sit right with me. So I made a video about it, talking about how, like, because my understanding was uh, a little bit different, which uh, now that I think about it, maybe it's a difference between new understanding of electronics versus traditional old times electronics <laughs> right because uh according to the old electronics and frankly i don't know if that is changed at all the definitions have changed at all or the definitions like the definitions students learn are are still based on the old time electronics but in any case voltage according to the old time electronics is only created from electric fields right okay so like voltage is equal to the integral of edl <laughs> for example yep. the electric yep. field uh, intensity according uh, if you go with that definition mm -hmm. uh, you can't have a voltage you don't have a definition of voltage across a coil for example got it right because there is no electric field through the coil it's just magnetic forces field yep it, yeah. right but according to my understanding, uh, I was saying, hey, uh, magnetic fields also provide energy to the circuit. And my definition was that voltage is available energy per charge, unit of charge, right? And if you have energy, if you have magnetic energy, you can still have voltage. So I w that's the point of debate. And I think that's what, where we were thinking different. According to his definition, he was right. Yes. According to course. my definition, I was right. <laughs> that I was going to say, this is my, <clears throat> this was my takeaway from the start. And after investigating and thinking about it a bit more, I'm still of the same opinion that it's fundamentally a different, a difference in the approach between yeah. a, between an engineer like yours, a practical engineer like yourself, and a theoretical physicist. Yeah. They, they just come at it from different points of views. And I, I think, yes, you're both right um, if you look at it from your that particular perspective. Um, and I actually think he's... I think you're probably right in that his setup is fundamentally flawed. I think he's... Is that still your opinion, that he's that his setup doesn't really explain what he's trying to get across? I can't say his setup is flawed because according to, the, to, his, to his definition, if there can't be any voltage across any loop of wire, then his setup is right. He's just showing that he reads different voltages when he moves wire. Got it. But then you know that in his setup, there's been magnetic fields in, induced in the wire, yes. in the coils. That's what's been showed on the scope. Yes, and that's, that's what I call voltage as well. But he doesn't call those uh, effects voltage, right? And right. that's the problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, I, yeah. So it's one of those things where you're both right. And I think it's an absolute, I've repeated a couple of times on the amp hour, I think now, is that, yeah, it's a classic example of a fundamentally different approach between a practical design engineer and a theoretical physicist. Yeah, but my, my thought is that, like, if in reality it makes more sense to have voltage across coils and define it the way I do, it helps better, uh, people understand it better, then why not 
change the traditional definition, right? <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. If you're, if you're becoming a theoretical physicist, you learn the theoretical physicist side of things. If you're doing an engineering degree, I think you should learn the engineering the practicalities of yeah. the engineering approach, I think. I mean, this, so I think it, right. it makes it more touchable, understandable, yep. right? Yep. It's like conventional current, for example. Yeah. We, we, we still do conventional current flow because it's easier, right? And I've done a video, does current flow through a capacitor? Mm. And whoa, that one. <laughs> once, again, <laughs> uh, once again, according to Maxwell's equations, mm -hmm. you can actually derive Maxwell's equations when you, you know, it all comes out in the wash. Current does actually flow through a capacitor <laughs> but in practice of course it doesn't it's just a charge yeah. build up on the plates and the electrons flow back this way but in circuit theory it's more yeah. uh, it's it's handier to think about yeah the current flows through a, a capacitor yeah, exactly. it's got like, an, yeah. an impedance at frequency it's got you know 100 ohms impedance at this frequency and current flows through it in yeah, a loop. Right. it's like it's just easier to think about it but uh, magnetic fields especially the magnetic fields is the magic black art of electricity too like yeah exactly I, I i learned at some point that even magnetic fields are not real they are just a shadow of electric fields right oh god you can go into deep into the physics it's yeah, just and, nuts and, and then, yeah. yeah i realized that i'm just too dumb for it so yes. like <laughs> same here same here i don't have a physics background i got you know i i barely got through you know first first second year physics you know oh i like, did i, I, I did try to talk to people you know i i right, talked okay. to you know veritasium yes yeah he made a video about it and how the, you know, the Einstein's theory of relativity affects the distance between electrons as perceived by a stationary. And he was, in his video, he was explaining that's why, uh, like, uh, a charge repels from a wire, for example. Okay, interesting. But, uh, he did it in a very simple way. When I tried to implement it, to my knowledge, that didn't make sense. So I tried to ask him for more information and we got to a roadblock that he didn't know and I didn't know. And I, I tried to talk to, you know, in my uh, the debate I had with Professor Lewin. In, in my second video, I also had a communication with uh, another professor of the same university. And I tried to ask him to explain these to me. And he's pretty good at these, but he presented me with a bunch of equations. And that's not what I want. When I want to learn something, I want to see it happen. I, <laughs> I don't, it's not complex equations that makes me go and refresh all my math from high school. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I, I couldn't do it. If you asked me to solve an, you know, a differential yeah. equation, integral or something, I, I, I just couldn't do it. It's, yeah. it's, it's gone completely out of my head. You know, yeah, I have to go back and just yep. Google. <laughs> yeah, Google it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then, and then it slowly comes back to you, but you've still got to make heads or tails of it. You know, you still got to, yeah, some things just don't immediately come back. Yeah, like uh, I wish, you know, Dr. Feynman, I wish he was still here that could explain these things to us yes. because I think yep. he knew yep. it in a way that could explain it without equation. Like, yes, just, you totally. know, simple ways of explaining. <laughs> well, is it, I don't know who, was it he who said that if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it? Uh, maybe, his yeah. quote? I, I, think, I think it might have been his yeah. quote. Yeah, possibly. It's a good quote, yeah. He ha yeah you no, have to it's great. know it well. <laughs> so what was the end result of that whole thing? Because you, you only did a second video, right? There was a follow-up yeah. video. And what was the conclusion so that you the conclusion came to? Was, we we uh, agree to disagree? or? I did mention in that video that our definitions are different. That's why our understanding is different. But I also, uh, like I said, I talked to... Uh, I forgot the professor's name. I actually he was recommended by Dr. Lewin. He told oh, me. Oh yes, to, I remember you mentioning he, him. Yeah. He told me to go talk to. Too bad I forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. We'll put it. With co uh, communicating with him, we ended up agreeing that my definition is correct or better at least. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, what from an engineering point of view or from a physics point of view? I think from both. Or just like, a general uh, interest. Like, 
point. Yeah, he, wa he was asking me to do some tests for him so he could understand things better. And when we did all those and like compared it, you know, to Feynman's uh, lectures. Yep. From Dr. Feynman's definitions, it seemed like my definition fits uh, his at, at least Dr. Feynman's explanations or definitions better. Oh, okay, right. I think I remember that now. Yeah, okay. But still, I, I, I yeah, I, I, don't I, I still who... think you're both right. <laughs> <laughs> I still think you're both right. Yeah, I mean, it, and it, it, it all depends on definition, right? So, yep. And I still think that his demo is a poor example, a flawed example of what he's trying to explain. Mm -hmm. I, I probably don't even think. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say you can't do a demo to show exactly what mm -hmm. he's talking about, but him just using a single coil like that and a scope and stuff, I, I yeah. don't think that's showing what he thinks it's showing. It, it's pretty confusing, yeah. I mean, everyone, everyone understands it differently. Even according to him, all the books, all the physics books also go kind of with my side of, def my side of definition. And... He says all of them are garbage, basically. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the garbage, because only the physics matters. Only the pure yeah, yeah. physics matters. Didn't he title his, one of his videos, Only the Pure Physics Matters or something? Interesting. But I thought, yeah, that was one of the most fascinating um, exchanges Discussion. I've ever seen. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but I loved it. Yeah, I have to be careful. Like I, <laughs> I, It doesn't feel good to be wrong in front of a million of people. <laughs> I was going to say, is, is there any time that you've done your video and you go and edit it and you just go, oh, geez, that's, that's embarrassing. No, I got that wrong. I'm not going to release this video. Is there any, or, or you had to go back and reshoot it and change it or? Well, as, as long as I haven't released it, uh, I can always go back and reshoot it and I will go back and reshoot it if it's wrong or if it's totally wrong, I'll just scrap it completely. Yeah, scrap, scrap it completely. <laughs> but, but typically, like for... I don't think I make major mistakes because they are very obvious. For the minor mistakes, uh, I usually release my video one day earlier to my Patreons in, patrons in Patreon so they get to watch it and if there is a massive mistake that I missed, <laughs> they can bring it up before I release it to public. So I can go back and reshoot or edit and make it correct because I, I don't want to be wrong in general. <laughs> got, got it. Yep. So do you do um, scripts or do uh, you just sort of do notes or how, I, do, you, I, how do you do your videos? I, I do scripts most of the time because uh, I realize that if I write scripts, especially with my English speaking uh, if I get my grammar right and my thoughts in order, uh, it's easier to shoot and the video flows better. Okay. Like right. if I want to explain something, I write it down and I realize that say, if I say this paragraph before that paragraph, it sounds better and people understand it better. So I try to do a script for at least those type of videos. But for the ones that I built something, for example, then I just have to go with the build process. Yep, and exactly. Uh, sometimes afterwards, afterwards I build something, I realize that, hey, it's good to have uh, to fit something in some sections to explain better or make it more interesting and things of that sort. But yeah, the, the problem with um, unscripted videos is that I end up with a ton of footage. Right. <laughs> editing those and bringing them down to this consumable size <laughs> is a tough job. I sometimes I do a lot of times do unscripted videos when I review people's submissions on my subreddit, for example. I, okay. Uh, yep. I, I basically sit down, record for three hours and then try to squeeze it in 12 minutes, for example. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. So how, how long does an average video take you to Make. Come up with the concept and then script it and then maybe rehearse or shoot, do a couple of retakes and then uh, edit and polish. Com coming up with the idea is the worst part. <laughs> right. Because, you know, like, I, I, uh, like we can make a lot of things and just film them. But I, I can, I, I want to make it interesting and funny. And <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, of course. You yeah. know. It's, yeah, like, for your target audience. Yeah, and I, uh, th that's my interest too, not just for audience. I want right, to... Right, no, of course. Like, 
because if the video is not interesting, it's it will be super hard for me to edit it too. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Like, yeah, I can't I, do a video that I'm not that I have no interest in at all. It 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 just is impossible. I can't do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's terrible and uh, like because you know when I edit my videos, I may en end up watching the video from beginning to the end like 20 times until oh. I make oh. sure every single bit is done. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, that's painful. Yeah, that's I, painful. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's my problem. I have some issues. <laughs> like <laughs> I see. Well, the thing is that I see other. I watch a lot of other YouTubers' videos too, and people. A lot of people are just good at it. They things come naturally to them. They speak well. They are funny when they need to be, and they put things together nicely. And those people don't need to put so much work on their edit. <laughs> right. But for me, I have to write the script if I want to make it good, so that I know it's a like when I read the script, I like it. Then. If it is scripted, like every paragraph takes me somewhere between 5 to 50 times to repeat oh, until wow. my language, I like, uh, yeah, like my actions in the video, my interactions with the camera, I feel good about it. And then I go edit it and keep watching it to make sure I didn't lose anything in my edit. And <laughs> it, it, it's hard work. <laughs> right. You've, you've mentioned this a couple of times in that um, your language thing. I mean, you seem to speak English so like as if you were almost <laughs> almost born there, you know. You are I too mean, nice. Born Thank into you. an English speaking thing. It's like, so do you have to trans, do you have to think and translate or what, how do you? How does that work? When did you start learning English? Well, uh, we we start we learn English in school, like in high school, we start learning English, and then in university we learn English too. Uh, it's like one of the choice you can learn any language, but English is the most popular one, so you learn that. You don't get super good at it, but then when I came to Canada, I started learning more as I talk to people. <laughs> Got it. So when you're studying um, engineering, is that mostly in English or is that in Iranian? Do you have Iranian textbooks? Do you have, what do you, are they translated textbooks? Like, uh, they're, you know? they're, they're, uh, they're, there are, a lot of them are translated, but a lot of them are English too. So, and a lot of words and terms are in English anyway, right? Yep, right. Uh, well, nowadays they try to translate everything, like make a new word for it in Farsi. But oh, really? Okay. <laughs> which doesn't make sense. Like, uh, it, uh, uh, right now, if I go back to Iran and try to talk to people, a lot of things don't make sense to me anymore because they started oh. translating a lot of foreign words. Interesting. Especially, okay. for example, that... uh, French used to be, like before English, French used to be a scientific language in Iran and we had a lot of French words. Wow, okay. Like the elevator, we called it ascensor, which is a... French word, right? Wow, okay, interesting. <laughs> but now all those are translated into, like helicopter, we called it helicopter, right? Right. But now they call it like turning wheel or something. <laughs> right, okay, in Farsi. Right. In Farsi, yeah. Meaning, like, Farsi. yeah. So yeah, yeah they, they start talking and I wouldn't understand what they're saying and I have to get a new wow. dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> so when did that start? Is that a political movement, like change I, that started? I don't think it was political or I, everything is kind of political yeah, well, everything then. is yeah exactly <laughs> but I don't know some, someone thought that we have to revive our language or something of that sort and right that's what happened yeah got it <laughs> which might be good or might not be good I don't know I don't have really a strong opinion either way some uh, I, I know a lot of European countries have their own words for everything right got it yep so Iran can be one of them, I guess. <laughs> okay, but but even then, you had to learn English just to do engineering because there were yeah. a lot of terms that just weren't yeah, available that's right. in Farsi. Okay, and it's good too because, like, uh, if you you don't always work in your own country, you want to communicate with uh, people around the world or learn from people ar around the world. So it's good to know terms that connect you to everything. <laughs> So have you always lived in uh, Canada? You're in Vancouver, are you? Yeah, I'm in Vancouver. I, I came here in 2001, yes. <laughs> why, why Vancouver? Was that a choice or was that a just uh, a random choice? Or was it a... Well, how did that come about? 
Well, my personality is such that <laughs> when I get stuck in a in something, I don't really want to change my position. So after university, I started working in Iran, and my thought was that okay, I'm gonna make the country a much better place. I'm gonna uh, help right. everyone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I I didn't want to really leave the country. Uh, but after two years, like uh, in my university, that there were like hundred students in one class, maybe 95% of them have left the country. Oh, real? Wow. Okay. Is that because there's no jobs there or is that, why, why did they leave? Well, uh, after opportunity, right? They, they want to have uh, yep. better lives, I guess. Okay. Right. <laughs> and better opportunities, more income, safer environment and things of that sort. <laughs> so a lot of people leave if they can. Uh, a lot of people don't want to leave even if they can like for example my sister-in-law uh, she wants to stay there and she likes like there's a lot of good things about Iran but if you forget if you ignore the political aspects of the country like people are nice the culture is good and uh, like there is a ton of history there and people are connected together in good ways <laughs> And like a lot of people connect to that kind of mindset better than just leaving the country and, you know, having a different type of opportunity, right? Like, I, sometimes I feel bad too, like I left the country and for a better position for myself, instead of yes, staying instead there, of trying to help trying to make it make better, it better yeah. <laughs> right? Yep, got it. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, but it's tough. Yeah, like, so after two years working there... Uh, the environment didn't really match my personality. <laughs> right, got it. And yep. then uh, the one of my friends, and I, I still I didn't want to leave. I thought that's life. See, when you leave, right, course, when you yeah, yeah. live in a, an environment and you don't travel, because like for example, uh, in Iran, barely anyone leaves the country. Like mo uh, nowadays, much more. But back then, traveling wasn't norm outside Iran. Okay. So, Wow. I was maybe, what, 24 years old when I first left Iran and went to Dubai, the neighboring country. And oh, okay. So, so you went there first? Yeah, because I, I had to take like English exam to, for my university admission, right? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yep. So like uh, my friends, some of them were in Vancouver. One of them came to visit Iran and we were talking and he said like he mentioned how normal living is in Vancouver and it was so different for me that I was like damn I have to go now yeah. <laughs> right. so yeah right away I told my wife okay we are leaving eight <laughs> right. months I'm gonna apply to a university and yep. I'm gonna study there for my master's and I applied like eight months later I got the admission and started studying in Canada and then I stayed. Got it. Is your wife legally? I stayed uh, legally. Legal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, is your wife into the sciences as well, or? Uh, not as much. She, she she was my classmate actually. Oh, she, okay, right. She was studying uh, <laughs> electronic control systems. Yep. It was fun for, and she she enjoyed getting the degree because like she learned things that she says that it would be good for her in long term anyways. Right. But she, it wasn't the field that she wanted to work in. So she switched to her interest. How many females were in your studying there, like engineering or sciences? Mm. Was it a big percentage? I think it was like 30 to 50% female. Wow, I think, that's huge. Not. Like, especially in Iran, that, that's the thing about Iran too. Like parents say, if you don't go to university, you're a loser. You have to stay. <laughs> right. So, so you've got to pick something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And my wife was pretty good. Like my wife was very good in math. Uh, and she wanted to go study math, but her parents told her that, eh, you know, math. There's no is, jobs uh, in math. There's no future. <laughs> go find something else. And engineering, went, engineering. Yeah, yeah. And f good for me, she went to engineering. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, electronics. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah. when I went to university, I found so many of them just weren't 
there like they they were there because they just needed to do something they didn't really care about it mm -hmm. you know that they didn't yeah. really want to be engineers but i don't know their parents told them or they got their yeah. marks to get in or they were good at math so i don't know engineering uh, yeah yeah you know it's like yeah yeah, oh, yeah. sad to see as long yep. as they like to do what they do <laughs> <laughs> it's good yep so do you come from a hobby interest background or was or was university your first no, actually, the reason, the reason I got into electronics was because of my hobby. Like, I was much younger. I, I don't know how young. Was I 12, 13, 14 or something? And some, one of my relatives bought me one of these electronic kits that you put together. Just the the uh, spring terminal ones or the... The, was it the spring terminals or was it the, oh no 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 it was just it, it, it was a pcb with some components that you had to oh, solder okay. yourself oh okay right yeah kit yep yeah and uh it was just a basic what do you call it bi-stable blinking yep. led lights uh, right you know? <laughs> yeah right nice and i put that together and it was so enjoyable for some reason yep I had no idea how it worked, but it was so enjoyable that I kept dragging my mom to the kit store to <laughs> buy me new ones. I put a, like a transistor radio together. Nice. No idea how it worked, but I just enjoyed putting you it together. You just enjoyed and, building and making something. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, other stuff yeah. too, like I, I used to like tear things apart at home, like our vacuum cleaners mm -hmm. and stuff yep. and try to clean them and fix them and put them back together. So yeah. Uh, yeah, in general, I enjoy Standard enjoyed. hobby background, yep. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> how How is the hobby scene over there? Where, like you said, stores. What what kind of stores? Were there like just there hobby are, stores like this? or like There, there, there are were? stores <laughs> there that actually I wish those kind of stores were here too. Right. Some of the, there, the, there are much fewer like the local electronic shops that sell resistors and capacitors and transistors and things of that sort. There is only one that I know in Vancouver, but in Iran there was a whole like a shopping street filled right. with wow. all sorts of kits wow. and electronics. And <laughs> really? Wow. Has that changed now? Do you know? When was the last I time you went back there? I haven't gone to that street for a long time, no reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, <no. laughs> yeah. but uh, I think it is still there. It's it it's you. It was used to be a like a very famous street, and like everyone, all the students and all the they technical all people there would and, go there. Yep. Like if you if you designed a PCB, you would go and give it to a store to make it for you, and would get it back. Oh, and wow. everything was so cheap. Wow. <laughs> Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Like, the, yeah. That, so that was around the late 90s, was it? Something like that? Uh, what, 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 late 90s. It was, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> mid, mid, late 90s. Okay. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably find that there's probably men, much fewer of them there now if you do go back. It's just like, like, it's the same here. It's the same in the US. It's the same in the UK. It's the same in Germany. Yeah, it's like, the same everywhere. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it depends. Like, um, I don't think online shopping is a huge thing in Iran. Okay. So right. it is possible oh, okay. that the stores are... Okay, so they might are, have survived. Yeah, I think they might still be there. Um, like, uh, for example, here, if you need anything, we just order from DigiKey. Yeah, yeah, of course. We, we yeah. don't have DigiKey there, right? Right. Or any company of that size that can Okay, like, there's, no, there's no equivalent there. Yeah. So that sort of... Right. Or at least the one wow. that I know of. Okay. Food business is very good, though. They deliver food to your home from any <laughs> restaurant. But wow. Ooh, electronics, wow, okay. electronics, electronics, I don't think... Electronics in there, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so any plans to move from Canada or Canada's it? Yeah, like I said, I, when I get stuck somewhere, I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> You're right, yep. Yeah, you know, like since I moved to Canada, I traveled a lot and I've been comfortable here. I didn't feel the need to move anywhere else. But unless, I don't know, I, I, I have everything I want here. <laughs> right, and, and so your, your lab, where you are now, that's your house, is it? Yeah, it's my house. It's a... It's a 10 foot by 10 foot or three meter by three meter room that I oh, okay. work yep. in. Pretty small. <laughs> yep. So are there any plans to get like a, a bigger space? I, I, th I think I sometimes think about it, like especially since it's getting quite crowded here. Yep. And I don't want to take another room. Yep. And sometimes I feel like if I hire some people, they, mm. I could get some help 
expand my work into yeah, new areas. Yeah, that's a tough decision. Yeah. yeah. Have you have, so have you given that much thought or not a lot of thought like the way I my channel is running right now is steady and good. Yep, you don't want to upset the uh, apple cart. No, I don't think I'll upset it. It's just that when I get stuck in a position, I don't really want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yep, yep, understood. Yeah, but it, I think it would help me grow much more. Like, for example, one of the thoughts I have is that, like, I put a lot of things together. If I was able to make a kit out of them, like the kits oh, I used yes, to buy, of then I would have my own brands of kit, my own flavor of kits. And yeah, if. Yep. Uh, but I would have to have, like, I could hire an engineer to quickly design the, what I wanted as a kit for me. Got it. Or maybe, you know, uh, someone to edit my videos, although I'm a little bit afraid to pass yes, my editing to someone gonna else. I was going to ask because... about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very personal thing, isn't it? I mean, editing, I, I, yeah, a lot of people ask me that. Why don't I get an editor? It's because. Well, A, they'd have to know as much as me, um, yeah. you know, in terms of what, you know, if I said something dumb in the video, they were, you right. know, they'd, they'd have to know and they'd have to correct that or they'd have to tell me. And, you know, it's just, yeah. And just and the I, style, I you know, pride. the style of the video. The, the, the style, small things, you know. Yeah, like, uh, like I said, I watch every video like 20 times until I get the style down. Now, if I want to give it to someone else. You're going to have to watch it again anyway. Yeah, You're going to have to watch the final anyway. product anyway, and then back and forth. It could help. Like, for example, sometimes I spend a lot of time putting some effects on my video that maybe if somebody else, if they do that or make some animation quickly for what I need, that would be nice to have. I still would have to watch the video like 10 times at least. <laughs> right. But uh, it would take some load off of me. But at the same time, you know, by the, you know, the technical stuff you put equations on the screen we put uh, like pictures of this and that and yeah by the time we get it right maybe i just make it myself you make it yourself <laughs> yeah i have come to that conclusion by the time yeah we muck around with an editor it's just yeah i don't know maybe, maybe i hire well, like if i have an editor it must in my opinion it must be a local editor like works for me Right, yes. And only for me. And I yep. keep... <laughs> <laughs> you keep them chained to the... <laughs> yeah, and I, I force yeah. them to do what I want until they learn perfectly. And then they find a better job opportunity and leave and I have to do everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you're screwed. And yep, exactly. It's a tough call. Yeah. It's, um, no. yeah, I don't know. But you know you know Linus? Yes. From Linus Tech yep. Tips? He, he lives close by to me and I visited oh, him. Really? He, he has a okay. huge huge relatively company he, he has like 40 people i thought he people. was in the us i didn't know no, he was he's in, in surrey he's in surrey the, really? like one of our neighboring cities okay <laughs> right like a half an hour away uh and he he he, there, he has 40 people working for him like two three 40. cameramen yeah it's crazy there's a bunch of people that manage his merchandise Wow. And there is a bunch of people that do the editing and stuff. It's oh, well, incredible. he has he has many yeah. channels, right? He has like yeah, seven, yeah. eight different channels. I know. It's, he, it's crazy. He even has different hosts too, like a couple yep. of different hosts. Yep, I've seen and that. He makes videos every day, so it works for him, yeah. But yeah, I mean, even if I had someone that could help me with my merchandise, like these t-shirts I designed, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, five years ago, and I still sell the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't yes. know anyone in our, in our little niche who's made it work. I, I tried to make it work. You know, I had a full-time employee and, you know, it just, yeah, yeah it wasn't really. What know. did he work for you or she? I don't know. Um, he, um, he tried to do some content as well um mm -hmm. and then but he was a bit of a probably wasn't suited to making content so i was kind of like forcing him to make content and he d yeah it wasn't really his right. thing i thought i thought his content was great but he mm -hmm. really didn't like making them so right. it was kind of you know he was yeah didn't didn't really enjoy it so and then uh, he wasn't um, a youtuber basically <laughs> he wasn't he was not a youtuber it's just and most people aren't like most people yeah. don't have the ability to be a youtuber so if you're going to hire someone for making content geez it's, it'd be really hard to find yeah you don't know how long I've tried to get my wife into making YouTube videos, but right. she's not a YouTuber. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, most people just aren't. They can't handle it. And then yeah. from a uh, product design 
uh, point of view. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, it just didn't work. Yeah, we went down the rabbit hole. I'll do have right. to, I'll have to do a video on that. And it just, yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, it was it was handy having someone here, like um, you know, helping out on videos because he would right. do he would do like he had skills I didn't. So he he had the three D modeling uh, right. CAD skills that I didn't. He had the uh, programming skills that I didn't, you know, the really advanced programming skills that I didn't and right. um, other stuff and, and web skills and all that, you know, all that sort of modern um, stuff, which I didn't. So that complimented. But then at the end of the day, it was like it was too distracting having someone here. So I think for the last like nine months, um, he just worked from home and I just worked from here. And it was like, you know, right. we basically didn't see each other and, and it just worked <laughs> out better. Um, right. Yeah, it was because when you have someone here, you end up talking to them and you get distracted mm -hmm. and nothing gets done. And, you know, yeah. Well, I was thinking maybe maybe if there is someone there that relies on me to make videos for a living, then maybe it encourages me to put more effort and do them quicker too. <laughs> I don't know. But one of the things, yeah, one of the things I was thinking is that like, if I make enough money to be able, because I like to buy, buy or at least sponsors give me all the tools that I need, right? If I can have a lot of tools and I won't be able to use them all uh, often, right? If I am able to get a larger studio or a larger office and put those things there, and then somehow give membership to people to come and just oh, use those make stuff. a space yeah i've, I've yeah, thought like a maker about space that. kind yep. of thing so people come in use those tools and then i between them maybe i find someone that is good and likes to make videos and maybe right. has a skill that can help yes. me yes yeah then That's we can what join I up about too yeah yeah but i i i, I think it would suck all my time though I just think I'd end up spending all my time there and not making any content. So, well, I mean, know, if if hard. somebody comes in and they are good and, and they're you, good, yeah, right. And then you let them manage their space. <laughs> ah, yes, right. They've instantly become a, a de facto employee. Then, yeah, I mean, you have to like kind of decouple yourself from all that work because, like, if you you if you are able to decouple yourself. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people that would want, for example, I have a 3D printer here that I barely use, but there are a ton of people that would like to just come here and print something uh, and design something and work. So if I had a space that would let people to come use everything for free, uh, then I'm sure a lot of people would come and I'm sure there are some good people amongst them that would be able to just take over the management of that area. And maybe out of that, you can get you can some find somebody, like, yeah. somebody who's enjoy, enjoying designing electronics would be design a kit for you. You want a part 3D designed for one of your videos, somebody would do it for you for free too. They exactly. are working there for free and they work for you for free and everyone gets something out of it, right? Right. Maybe. So yeah. maybe. Is there, yeah. is there any space nearby your house? Is there like an industrial park or is there, how does it? work near, near your place Not is there like all. a business park is there like where you can buy or rent office space oh or? well the, those kind of things well you know vancouver things are pretty expensive here at least like wh where linus is it's a little bit uh, away from vancouver the city uh, the, the further away you get it's a little bit uh, cheaper to rent a place okay but then See, I'm working, I, I'm waking up and just coming to my computer and then go back to sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. I, I'm having a hard time compensating for having to go like 45 minutes to work in an office. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's why I'd say, like, is there anything nearby? Is there anything like a bike ride away or something like that? Is there there is, but the, like, if, if you want to rent something like that, it's quite expensive, right? There is, I don't know, is, uh, I don't know, you would be paying $10,000 a month to get a Ooh. decent size. No, no. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah no, no, I, no. I need multiple that. sponsors per month to, yeah, <laughs> to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right, mate. Well, our amp hour's up. Thank you very much for oh. joining us. It was oh, no. good fun. Thank you. It was, it was yes. fun. Yes. And for the, the two people out there who don't know who you are, we'll link in your channel down below. You're on, oh, the sure. tw you're on uh, Twitter. Are you anywhere else? Are you on the Facebooks? Are you... 
I'm on Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram, although I, you know, I don't really, I'm not really active different places. <laughs> right. Maybe okay. I'm most active on Twitter. Anyway, I'm either Electroboom or Electroboom guy. So they search it, they find it. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Matty. No, thank you. It was fun. Excellent. Catch you next time. Yeah, take care. Bye.